I'm, I'm, I'm sure everyone got the point that, that this guy, Frank Lepan, uh, put in his introduction. Here, here's why I wrote this book. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Um, so do we want to summarize that? What, the, what, 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 what's, his, what's, what's his argument for why I needed to write this book? I like the line between the Silk Roads and the New History that he has a purpose there. Yeah, there it is. Uh, well, this, it, it, it's not just his purpose, but it's a, it's a review. Um, or, or as he says, yeah, well, I, I went to school and this is what I heard. And uh, I had got some other information and it seems to me, yeah, maybe we- He's trying to correct the distortions of Western history. In his opinion, the distortions. Not of not Western history particularly, but of the world history. world history. And, and, and as an example, when we are, re, when we are told to teach world history to uh, ninth and tenth graders, ninth and or tenth graders in in, in the uh, in California, there's a syllabus of what we're supposed to teach. And guess what? 100% of it is Western. History. It's all Western history. And if the other any other places show up, it's only when the West comes in and, and colonizes them and takes over. And, so then there's there's a there's a chapter on why Hinduism was sort of um, backward because of castes and blah blah blah. So uh, so he, so he has this purpose, um, and, but it's more than just in the past. When we finish the book, you're going to see that it's arguing and it's returning. Um, the, the, the center of the world history is clearly shifting back to where it has mostly been as far as history goes. Um, anyone want to share whether this is convincing or not? We want to argue with it right off the bat. <laughs> that was my personal complaint uh, that, that it was so Western centric. And there's the whole East that, that uh, American history classes. Don't teach about it all, you know. You know. Oh, when you took the course. Well, I mean, you know, in in school, like in elementary school or a junior high and high school, more, I guess. But I just felt like it was so Western centric, and I just didn't feel like they covered anything about as if half the world, over half the world, was hardly existed. <laughs> you know, didn't have a civilization. <laughs> I didn't have you didn't have one. Well, you were in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so how did that go? You know, uh, <laughs> did, 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 did you get uh, more Japanese history? Because I lived in Japan for two years, 12 to 11 to 13, it really opened my mind up about what's the rest of this place all about. And, and you know, the last, the last program you had when you showed how much population is in Southeast Asia, uh, it really, Focus the attention on all of those countries. But I'm, I'm, another perspective I have is food. You know, we don't recognize how much influence we've had from Chinese and Indian food, and, and now it's even Persian food, you know, that's coming into well, what, what do you call the flatbread uh, from all of these areas? Uh, and, uh, well, it's not an Indian, it's, it's, become, yeah. it's become popular now. Yeah. Anyhow. You know, going uh, to your food thing, the the um, pasta that came that went from China all the way across the um, it's a um, like a ravioli, and you know that that didn't originate. I don't think it originated in Italy. The, it came. Yeah, you couldn't have spaghetti across. because tomatoes were not there. Tomatoes were the, were the American tomatoes, tomatoes. <laughs> and, uh, and pasta was uh, coming from China. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, Marco Polo was playing the thing. Was he get you yeah. his pasta in the West? Yeah. Uh, well, and apparently there's some debate about how early it got here. The same with paper and a lot of other things that are going to show up in the book. I mean, he asserts various things in the. In some cases, one could say, yeah, well, there, there are other points of view. Not to deny that what he's saying is true, but the timing is to be off. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just going to we had the growing up in, in England, what we had the history, as far as I can remember, there was a big atlas on the wall, and we just learned all the red stuff. I was entirely all about kings, queens, battles, and and 
But at least the colonialism got you. Go to India. It, it, oh, just <laughs> well, it got you out of Europe. Anyway. Yeah, well, set, so West Africa, East Africa, South Africa. That's true. That's never set on your course, then. Well, yeah, and 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 then and even better, you. The, so yours was yours was red, and the French Empire, which was small, it was orange, and you could stand there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we did. I mean, we had the Indian Wars. Yeah. Was that was that taught? Was that taught in, in Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's courageous. Uh, it's a, Maybe it's a, not with the same fans that yeah. I think it may have been I can be suddenly it was almost suddenly one side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean so so I mean I, I it, 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 what for what it's worth. I remember sitting somewhere and listening, it must have been something on TV and somebody there was debate about cross-cultural and intercultural and teaching and that kind of stuff. And someone got irritated enough to say, well, yeah, okay, fine, but we can surely agree that this is 1952, can't we? And the Native American Indian uh, who was a good car said, no, we can't agree on that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not true. That it, it, is, it is from your perspective. But there's plenty of other calendars out there. Um, and we we sort of forget and that we should be talking about this right now with Chinese New Year's. No, no. And it's not just the calendars with different starting points. Um, there's a few of them, but furthermore, different ways of dividing the year up as well um, into not just 365 and a quarter and so forth. The fact that the West is, this is, this, this is insidious and the West shouldn't be criticized for this. It's just common sense now. You sort of stick to it. You're going to have a common thing, but it does change one's perspective when you say, no, actually, it's the year 5,872 5, as opposed to 2022. Yeah. I thought the most fascinating was the Mayan. So in the Mayan <laughs> calendar, if the latest cycle is whatever it is, and you just keep going over it, so then there is no sense of, yeah, that happened 100 years ago. <laughs> Oh, uh, it happens. In, you, you name the, there's names to the cycle. Oh, okay. So there's names so, to the cycle. So, so this is the this is your ten of the cycle. Yada yada yada. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So but the cycles repeat, and, 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 and the mathematics of the Mayan cycle of repetition oh, yeah. are extraordinarily sophisticated. Um, it, it's a it's a number system based on twenty, not ten, and, uh, and the whole purpose of the Mayan civilization. Supposedly, was to keep track of time, um, and, and it must give a very different sense of what history is. And not not just, especially when you when you say this this is what it does. Right, it just recycles, as opposed to it's going somewhere. Yeah, like the victory of the West, and then that's the end of history, or something yeah. nonsense. So, yeah. So the, the the sense of when spring starts, I think we're all kind of confused about that around here. But, uh, the other name for Chinese New Year is the Spring Festival. So the the, it, the Chinese New Year is associated with spring. We and and the Celtic calendar yesterday was Embolic, which is the start of spring to Celts, um, and. It, it's important because we just came out of the three darkest months of the year. We're done with the darkest quarter of the year, you know, and this is the sun as our celestial god. Uh, so just the notion of spring is interesting. And the Chinese uh, and the Celts are on the same page. Uh, as, as are many other cultures. I mean, just, you know, what about the Southern Hemisphere? <laughs> well, fair enough, and and and, uh, and so we don't. It's the information out there, and we don't know it because I mean, there's only so much you can cram, and we really got ten more years to live anyway. So, so. <laughs> but if you're our grandson's age, you can start in out of four months and start cramming it in. But he doesn't. He seems to pay a damn bit of attention to uh, to my to my lectures. What, what what else? There was other stuff here. Okay, so the Silk Road. Um, and he's going to argue that the Silk Road was there for a long, long time, and long, and that was the center of human civilization. Was there were there were multiple centers, but it's sort of uh, uh, the middle of it was the, the Central Asia kind of stuff, and said, and then it changed, and it changed rather dramatically because of two great voyages. 
of, uh, and those are obvious, right? The two great voyages of, yeah. of, uh, of Columbus and uh, through the Gamo, and, and then and then the center of the universe, the center of human the trade switched to the more the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean or a combination of two. And his argument, as you well know, we can debate this as the book goes on, um, is that uh, it's shifting back. And this was, remember this graphic from the last time I were here? I mean, you don't have to buy that, uh, but uh, a rather sophisticated economist in Singapore sat down and said, uh, as far as my, as far as my the, the reading, looking at the, the GDPs and trade and so forth, it's sure of switching back, which puts the center of world economic uh, gravity right in the middle of Nepal somewhere, I think, right now. <laughs> or, or maybe Bangladesh. Why is Bangladesh so important? Because that's why, that's what the woman who won 40 straight <laughs> yeah, Jeopardy, she, she got Bangladesh from yeah. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, we do that. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> All right, so procreation um, is. Did anyone remember this? Was this ever thought? In, 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 I can't even pronounce it. A key, a key, a key, a key, a key. And what's the assertion that the what's the assertion that the Franco fan makes for this? That it's the first great uh, uh, human civilization that is from which Rome is going to copy and so forth and so forth. Yeah, I mean, if we talk about the Roman, the Roman roads. Well, there's a Roman, there's a there's a uh, a commanded road from the center. Of, what's this part of the Silk Road, right on up to Ephesus? And I think a fair number of us have been to Ephesus. Yes, no. And it's not surprising that Ephesus was so grand because it was the end of the road from the Babylon Silk so Trade. But the, it was more than just that; it was big. I mean, the, this whole notion of they called them satrapies. What, what did the Romans call these things? The different multicolors? Provinces, the Roman provinces. And, and, so, and so, the, so the argument is that the, the Romans weren't inventing this stuff. Yeah, they were great, they were great at, uh, um, at governance uh, and road building and so forth, but they were copying from the East uh, at, at some degree. And what, what else, what, what also made this empire thrive? What would they, uh, the new towns, uh, the monumental arts. Some of you have seen this stuff before, right? I mean, uh, yeah. anyone who's been to Berlin? Yeah. Been to Berlin? Yeah. If you go to Berlin, it used to be in East Berlin. Now it's in the, in Germany. You can go to the uh, the Pergam Is it the Pergamon Museum? Yeah. Yes. And see the old gates. I mean, it's kind of disgusting because they belong where they belong. And one would bet, I would bet, that a day will come when they'll be given back. When they'll go back to or what's the country that didn't go back to now? Iran. Iran. Yeah, well, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem. I mean, but these are this monumental art that's going to be copied by uh, by Romans, by Greeks, and so forth. Was uh, was there the the, the other the uh, the palace of Persepolis? Jan, Jan was there. I know the the, the leaves were there. Uh, anyone ever, or anybody else ever made it to Persepolis? <laughs> yeah. And, and what was the year? What the, the shop put on? I was there. I was there that year. Were you there that year? Just uh, so it must be 1972. Or something. It was the 250th, yeah. 2500 yeah. anniversary of the Akhenaten. Uh, 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 yeah. We, we were there in 72 as, as well. Uh, and the, the theory is that. The people were so uh, upset with the uh, maxims of Paris bringing in the food, <laughs> the ostentation that, that that played a role in the eventual downfall. This, the shot, the shot was a real ass. Yeah, and this book's got a whole lot of shot later in, it, so, uh, because they throw as part of the Silk Road history and so. And, and, and if, it, if, if you haven't figured that out yet, as we work our way through the book, don't be disappointed. This is not uh, uh, about a third of the way through, or two, this 40% of the way through. The book shifts right into modern history. Uh, and it's a modern history from a Western perspective. I mean, from a, 
uh, Asian perspective, but it's, it's going to be an awful lot of stuff that is uh, somewhat familiar to us. So it's not all about the soap rule, which is a bit disappointing. What, what else? There was something else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Standing there the, 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 because the in, in, in Istanbul last year. I mean, the, the, in, in a uh, rather spectacular museum in Istanbul, archaeological museum. Well, why not Istanbul? First, it's a Byzantine Empire, then it's a Turkish Empire, so they had the ability to uh, steal all this the other stuff and put it in the museum. So, so an impressive empire, but of course it didn't last. Not a, not, no empires last. Um, What's what point does the uh, what, what what's what's the Asian Central Asia the Asia point that the that, uh, the, the Franco Pan wants to make about uh, Alexander? He's going to be talking here. And which direction is he kind of obviously going to go? Not not west. Um, he does go south first. Why why south? Nietzsche first. Yeah. Enormous and the more not enormous <clears throat> amount of uh, wealth there, which the Romans needed themselves. And then if you were uh, conquering civilization, you went east because that's where civilization was. And so, so he makes the point that he, Alexander will, Alexander and his ancestors, Alexander will be dead at 33 years old, so it doesn't last too long, will have a substantial influence on the Silk Road. Well, like what? What are some of the influences he uh, leaves behind? He and his, an, his ancestors, or his, not his ancestors, his, uh, his, generals, his followers. Sir. His generals. The generals, the generals, and the people that, and the ancestors of generals and the ancestors. What, so what big influence do they have on the Silk Road? They're governors, aren't they? It's various areas. Say again. The governors of the various areas. He's, 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 he's willing. What is his ruling strategy to his um, everlasting good? Yeah. Um, let the locals rule. I mean, we don't, we're not just passing through. We would like to hold on to this territory. Don't alienate them. There's only two of us anyway. Um, so, what else does he leave behind? Towns that we are familiar with. They're not called Alexandria anymore. They're called Herat or Kandahar or, or, or Bagram. These are all. These are all Alexandrians. Uh, as is the Alexandria that we still recognize today. Um, the city. Right on the Mediterranean, north of uh, Cairo, yada yada yada, uh, where the great library was and so forth. Can Kandahar, 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 yeah. uh, Herat, Kandahar, Bagram, and, and and many places along the way. And there were there, there were many uh, notable leaders named Sikander, Sikander, Sikander uh, Lodi, a Pashtun. Ah, now the Pashtun expert comes in. You know, I, I, I don't remember. I don't. I've forgotten this. Uh, fill it in. Fill it in. So, well, uh, uh, it was the first Pashtun uh, uh, empire, and it was the he, they uh, Pashtun took over the fifth Sultanate of Delhi, and uh, the, the guy that, that did it was Sikandar Lodi from the Lodi tribe. Time period. What was the time period? Uh, so uh, late 1400s. So okay. they fell to Babur. Yeah. The fifth and they fell to Babur. Babur and Mongolia. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but remember, Babur got his start in Kabul. Kabul. Yeah. He was yeah. the warlord of Kabul. Yeah. Exactly. What else? What else does the, the, the Alexander uh, give to the uh, to this the the the, well, the, the Silk Road is all about trade. What's another gift for the Silk Road trade? Greek. Greek. Well, cool. Yeah, both. Yeah, Greek. Coins. Coins. The for whatever reason, it seems that the uh, the, the Greeks and Romans were adept at the coin producing production. So you find these coins all over the Middle East, right into Kandahar and and, and, and into. Uh, in the Delhi and so forth, the, the Kushan Empire. And, and those coins were then copied by others that would live on after the Greeks are gone. Um, other, other things that they leave behind, I, 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 I can't even see that very well. He's dead, Alexander's dead. And the Eastern, the big section of his empire that is uh, uh, um, passed on to his general Suklid becomes an empire that lasts quite some time, almost 300 years. Well, more than you know, almost 300 years. 
And, it's, and that, that's substantial. And, and that it will spread well, this Hellenistic culture, the Greek culture. What are some of the what are some of the effects that that Greek culture has on other cultures uh, in the Middle East? Well, yeah. the, 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 as as is still the case with Islam, uh, it was prohibited to make uh, images of the Buddha early on. Um, but time passed, and uh, well, what was what's what's the point that this is this is the point that I think you could sort of say well. That's Frank Appen's point of view. There's other points of view which are not contrary, but additional to that point of view. What, what's Frank Appen's point of view regarding all these religions uh, uh, and the fact that you need statues and uh, and you need worship sites and uh, what's what's the competition that? makes them change that they that they inter by by intermingling by being present in the same culture at the same time or bumping up against each other, they affect each other, they take parts from each other, but they also force each other in directions that they weren't original. And one of the directions that the point that he, he's going to argue is statuary. Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and religious worship sites and temples, yeah. which are frankly pretty alien to uh, early Buddhism. The, 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 from the you sit under a tree. Was saying that the, the idea of pushing the religion was to consolidate the, the rule of the, the people of the, yeah, the, yeah. the empire? The people of the power yeah. co opted the religion. To, uh, and they and they had a hell of a, they have a wide choice of religions to co-op since there was a in chapter two is going to talk about this uh, this competition among the religions and, and now that, and that that did that rub anyone wrong that argument because that's not that's not all that's not altogether it's not unfirm it's not a, it's not a position that's idiotic it's not a position that most people are going to argue with me, but uh, did they push it too far? The idea that, yeah, that's what governments do. They find a religion that's going to work, that's going to help unify people, and they co-opt it. And they build, they make sure that uh, there's one version of it, and that one version of it is going to be um, uh, supported by uh, government uh, uh, finance and by government helping build temples and by government uh, uh, being involved in uh, creating, help, helping organize uh, religious festivals around whatever religious festival that religion wants to come up with. They don't care. They just want people to be organized. Well, I mean, at, at the time, the government was the supreme leader. I mean, Constantine adopted Christianity, and suddenly Christianity was on, on the go, and he was pushing it. Before that, it was persecuting. Okay. Well, he wasn't, but his, no, yeah, he was. his ancestor was. Yeah, right. Diocletian was, yeah. His predecessors. Yeah. His predecessors. Um, I, that, that, that's, that's just, I think all kind of, all leaders need to find some way to attract, follow, keep their followers in sort of in lockstep, and whether it's nationalism or religion, whatever they decide to adopt. It seems to me that's sort of otherwise you're, you're removed from the average person, and uh, there's no connection between them and you. And if that gets wider and wider, it's harder to rule. So we're we're all comfortable with that more or less. It sounds like what's it's, the counter? Yeah, I and mean, it's a, the counter argument is no, this is real religious belief. And this is uh these guys really converted, and then it all had to do with the uh, um becoming honest uh Zoroastrians or honest Christians, and, and 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 we're just trying to get people to heaven and so forth, as opposed to man, this is cool. I can I can manipulate this 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 uh uh, spiritual belief or this the philosophical belief it's Confucianism and uh, and uh, this becomes a unifying force how useful to uh, have this come along you so I just two points not to go against it it's to say that the first if I have a conversion and I'm the ruler and it, it does not have a benefit to my power why would I bother um trying to convince other people that's what I believe it's my belief that's okay so that part um it, it seems that most human civilizations seem to have a lot of connectivity between religions getting protection from power and power getting justification from religion 
But I also wanted to say another thing, which is, and I don't know enough to, to even think this through, which is that if, if a country is quite well comfortable in its power, it probably is quite tolerant of multi, multiple religions at one time within its population, because it doesn't need to convince everybody that everybody has to be on the same page. So I guess it depends if your religion is evangelical in some sort, like Christ, some Christian sects and Islam and all, then it, mm -hmm. it's part of your duty to go out and bring others under the religion. So. Yeah, but the, just to, to, the one thing I'm thinking about that would counter that is Spain under the Moors, which is Islamic, and they were quite tolerant of other religions, supposedly. That's 23rd hand knowledge, so I don't know. No, that's, 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 that's absolutely the case. But wasn't that probably because they were so far from their home that uh, that's sort of Alexander's philosophy as well, is that you can can't really maintain ironclad control when you get so far away from your base. But by the, by the time, by the time, um, and this is unfair because, uh, well, if you know stuff, it's supposed to want to be ashamed of it. <laughs> but by the time that, that is true of Cordova, and there's Jews and Christians, and uh, they're all getting along rather well in Cordova and Cordova. By that time, the people that were running in Spain were from Morocco. They weren't from, um, they weren't from, they weren't Arab at all. They'd been overthrown by the Alam, Alam something, but Moroccans, what we would call them Moroccans. So they weren't that far from home. Well, he, he makes, he, in, in chapter two or three, I can remember, he makes that point rather succinctly with the Sasanian Empire. To say there were moments when the Sasanian Empire, which is 2000, CE to 600, 200, 200 to 600 CE, and lasted a long time. There were moments when it was terribly persecutory of Christians and so forth, because they weren't comfortable um, in their own skin. But then as they became more and more powerful, they didn't give it any, you know, Zoroastrians, Christians, whatever. He does make the point of why Christianity became rather tame um, from a Sasanian leader's point of view, which uh, we may as well jump to. Remember what that was? It, 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 there was a lot of persecution of Christians in the 200s when the Sasanian Empire, which is modern per book, I can't, I, I'm not able, I'm not adept enough to go find that slide. Um, <laughs> uh, but but by, by the 400s, they're quite tolerant and, uh, of, of Christians. What happens to Christianity so that they're quite tolerant? It splits all over the place. And there's no such thing as Christianity. There are 15 versions of Christianity. Uh, and, and, and they all compete versus one another. So it's, uh, it's hardly a, uh, and, and they, they, they dislike each other more than they dislike Zoroastrians and so forth, like Shiites and Sunnis. I mean, the worst enemy you have is, uh, is not a Christian, it's, uh, it's the Shiite, 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 Sunni. How stupid that is. Was there, was there more? Um, just one iteration of uh, Islam, the Sufis, this is what were. Uh, uh, a kind and gentle version of, of Islam uh, and the great poetry of Rumi, uh, who was a Persian and he fled to Turkey because of the Mongols. But uh, uh, that, that was in vogue for centuries, right? Well, more than centuries. It's, and they it's were, still, it's still to some degree is. I mean, and, and they were merchants, right? They, they, uh, some Sufis were merchants, many of them were just sort of uh, Hare Krishna types. Um, they, they were they were a little odd, um, but they seemed to have some spiritual power, and uh, and they were not they were anything but threatened. Um, and they uh, sometimes brought some herbs that were interesting. And, uh, I think and, they, they, <laughs> they reached all the way to Indonesia. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the Sufis had more to do with conversion of Asia uh, of, of Central Asia than warriors did uh, by far. Did anybody else? When you were traveling in Asia, get the feeling that like um, Buddhism, maybe it was later, but it seemed so commercialized. One Buddha statue after the next, you know, and the thing is, we, it became a joke for us. We'd say, okay, now 
does he look like he he reached enlightenment looking at that statue because it looks so human you know it wasn't supernatural or in the beyond but he was it, just like that buddha before this picture he looked very human he didn't look like he was you know in nirvana at all. Well, well the mere fact that there is a statue is is, is already it's so contradictory to buddhism buddhism that it's as some people would say Buddhism exists, it's, so what, what the hell is going on there? And, and, and Frank Abed's answer to some degree is because the, the, there's the political units that are promoting Buddhism because it's very convenient. One, you have, you have sites, Buddhist sites scattered about every 40 miles, which is just perfect for the caravans and the training so you can stop and um, it's a, you'll get the similar story of Mecca in chapter four. Um, what, and Mecca had nothing to do with religion early on. Well, it did, but it was more a commercial issue. It, I mean, how wide, <laughs> it, it, if we were to go out to the, in America and, and promote this idea, wouldn't we be thrown out of West Virginia and Alabama? <laughs> I mean, it, it, what school, is this, does this need to be taught or would it be called, what's it called now? Um, uh, uh, critical race theory. This would be called critical religion theory. I mean, <laughs> is it is it overdue time for this sort of point of view to sort of permeate the world, or um, it, it, or is it is it is it only for people that are well educated to understand this and say, well, fine, but the stupid people have to be religious and go to church? I, yeah. I, well, I, 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 I shouldn't think, bring I that up. Making that argument. I mean, I think there's some people who get comfort and solace. I'm just talking about the politicians. Yeah, yeah. They, no, I, I'm not disagreeing with you. But I don't think that that applies to everybody who's religious. I mean, some people get something out of it, and some others don't. But I thought you were just talking about the, you know, the leaders. Well, I am. Uh, you're right. You're right. So when Roe v. Wade, Wade is overturned, I mean, what the hell is going on? Um, isn't it leaders uh, taking advantage of religion to uh, consolidate a sort of a base going on? Well, maybe we're off. Maybe we're off. <laughs> Buddhism, Buddhism. But there, there was enough, there was enough, this was interesting. I mean, he does refer to this. Um, uh, he, he makes the point that uh, that the similarity between the Homerian epics early in the Odyssey and the Mahabharata that is uh, um, the, the, the great story, the enormously long for India. Seven Samurai. Seven things yeah. he's done good. You want to tell it, your own? Well, yeah. and uh, he says, you know, they, they seem to have this, maybe they were influencing one another. He was off on his, his uh, it's odd to me because he seemed to be so well educated. He's talking about this in, 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 the, in the 300s and 200 BCE era. It's pretty well known. These were written much earlier. They were, they were already written down by the 8th, the 8th and 6th century. And the similarities have more to do, the argument goes, with the fact that they were once one single story. And then two groups of people moved, well, all sorts of groups of people moved in various different directions. But one ended up in Greece, speaking in, in, in the European language. Another group ended up hundreds of years later in India, speaking in the European language. And it's not surprising that as time passed, the stories maintained some similarities, but also with some rather dramatic differences. Um, so, so, for example, the both epics, uh, it's a gorgeous woman, white, who is being stolen. It is the cause of that, Helen and, and, uh, and, and the Iliad, and the, like, I don't know who the name is, and, and the modern Barbarita. And in both cases, the, 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 the central characters, or these warrior heroes, Achilles and, 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 and Junta, you know, the backup one. Uh, both in chariots, the, 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 but but the differences are astonishing uh, as far as the me the meaning that you're supposed to gain from reading the Iliad and the and the Odyssey. That is, these warrior types, Odysseus, Achilles, etc., are the great heroes of the Greek society, the great heroes of civilization. They're bright, 
they're courageous, they can beat anybody in battle. Whereas in the, in the Ramayana, the, the, for the Mahabharata, it's uh, Arjuna is standing there, he knows he's going to have to, his, his faith, his Hindu faith is to go ahead and kill people, and he's, he's, he, he didn't want to do it. And uh, so this is this is horrible. This is this violence is it never stops. And Krishna has to say, look, you're right, it's it's full of pain, nothing is wrong with what you're saying, but it's irrelevant. This is your duty, you've got to do it. This will go on forever, life has gone on forever. But 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 no, you're not a hero because you're a warrior, you're a hero because you you did your duty uh, as a human being. Um, yeah, I, I think you're you're simplifying the Achilles' personal pride and warrior skill to rely on. I, I would check to that. His, his personal pride was his downfall. Well, it was. Yeah. So I mean, it, it didn't lionize his personal pride. That's part of the. the well, well, of the well good. So fair enough. What? Well, yeah, well, he sold well, this tent because he didn't get the prize that he wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, he he it it totally up. For That's true. Greeks. That's true. But the the the, the Greeks is it true that the Greeks were thrilled that they won the battle? Yeah, they, were, they were thrilled, but if, if you read the story, I mean, if you read it from the from the Trojans' point of view, I mean, they were totally hosed. <laughs> no, because of one bad choice that the, you know, the, not even the successor son, the, the, the next successor son made it stealing out, so. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, the, so did the uh, genetic analyses back up the fact that they were one people? One like what? Like what's it? I mean, the, 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 it's pretty, pretty, pretty straight. The Indo, Indo Europeans. I mean, it, it's they went all over the place. So it was one of the great migrations of, of and and the, the, and the people they conquered sort of didn't disappear, but they get intermarrying with, and who knows what their genes were. So it's a it's a long, long time ago. Um, there's a reason for doing this. There's a reason for doing this. Step in Central Asia, everyone can. So yeah, I, I sort of know where the steps of Central Asia are. It's uh, it, it is by far the largest set of grasslands on planet Earth. Um, what makes grasslands? What is what is the what is the geological uh, meteorological necessity to create grasslands? And why are they the most fertile soil on the face of the Earth? Why? Uh, deserts are could be fertile, but there, uh, there's not enough water. And, and, and so much of the sand and so forth is not yet broken down. There's not a lot of humus because there hasn't been enough vegetation. Um, forests are typically not very fertile. Um, the Amazon soil is some of the least fertile on planet Earth. But well, that actually makes sense. Why would forests, you say that? That's, that's that bullshit. <laughs> Look at all the trees. Um, why are forests typically uh, the soils of forest, forest pretty awful as far as growth goes? Build up over time. Yeah, it erodes what? You got know, you know, all this massive amount of rainfall, and so then, then come, come the rainy season, and so much of the topsoil is washed off into the Amazon and goes down somewhere else. All, almost all the organic material is in the trees, and those trees are tough. I mean, they they are nasty. Yeah. They've beaten, they've competed to survive in, in hard soil and so forth and so forth. You shop them down, you're not going to replant the, the Amazon rainforest. Uh, the soil's too fragile, and it's a terrible soil. Grasslands, on the other hand, um, grasslands are perfect. Uh, they produce grass every season. The grass dies in the winter, de decomposes, grows, decomposes, grows, decomposes. You don't have enough trees because there's not enough water, but there is enough water for grass, and uh, and there's not enough water. There's not enough water to wash the topsoil away. So you got decomposition growth. The decomposition growth over tens of thousands of years. And you got these uh, steps. What are the names for steps? Our, our name is prairie or savanna in Africa, in, in, in New South America. Uh, Pampas. It's all this, it's all the same. This is these these are the great grasslands of the um, and it just so happens that this is by far the, the, the largest set of grasslands on planet Earth by far. I mean, and with with the, 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 this is of no particular interest, but maybe a little bit. I mean, sometimes you say, well, we're talking about the western step and the Altai Mountains are sort of the eastern border, the western border for the Mongols on the 
the border and the eastern steppes, more the sort of a, 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 a reference to the western steppes, the central steppes, and eastern steppes, you know, for whatever that's worth. But the other, it's interesting the Ukraine is considered a step. Ukraine is that. Yeah. yeah. It's oh. a breadbasket. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. breadbasket. I mean, it, that's that's why Hitler was headed there. It was oil in the Baku, but it was bread basket, it was a bread basket to feed his empire. He needed the Ukraine. And uh, sure, and uh, all these north-south rivers and so forth. So so uh, uh that's a mess. <laughs> that was intended to mean something, but the the, the dark blue lines are supposed to be human beings coming out of Africa and, and moving across the uh, moving eastward, the early migration of humanity naturally would have been west to east across the steppes, because after all, our ancestors or the, the, the ancestors, the people to the east came out of Africa at some stage. But at a certain, a certain stage in human history, John knows this better than I because he's a teacher, more or less 500, 1,500 BC, uh, the, uh, the, the immigration pattern then reversed. And there was more movement from east to west, from east to west. Why would that have been? Tough, tough question, but the standard answer is because life was tougher in Mongolia than it was in the Caspian, in the rather Caspian Sea. And those were tougher people. When things got really nasty and tough and hard and harsh, the toughest of all survived and they pushed the weakly deep west who pushed the even weaker people further west. And so it's been largely a migration of uh, you know, east-west migration, including including the uh, the Mongols and the Turks. Let me just do one more slide here. So, so, you, so you have areas, areas of the world that uh, were mostly Turkish speaking uh, and mostly Mongolian speaking. These are not in the European languages, of course. John? Yeah, if you get your DNA uh, done by National Geographic, so they they show, you know, as a man, the path of your Y uh, chromosome over eons, right? And mine does exactly that. It goes uh, from west to east and then curves back and joins the Yamnaya wave going east to uh, west, me. Uh, and winds up in uh, well, no no wonder we were in China. They mistook, <laughs> they mistook you for Confucius. No, <laughs> well, Janet's path ought to be interesting because she's she's mostly the end of all it turns out. <laughs> no, well, she spent a high percentage of the end of all it. Well, apparently the end of were quite right. <laughs> But, uh, he's, trying to, he's trying to make pass, make up pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is going to be a long drive home, even though it's only two miles. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just smile and frown at the pass. All right, so what's this? Uh, what, you, uh, uh, the, the Han dynasty, the, so the, the Greeks contributed a great deal to the Silk Road uh, coins and Greek and, uh, and towns and the uh, the Chinese will contribute a lot to what moves the Chinese out of the uh, Yellow River Valley heading west. What's what's the motivation for the Chinese to move? And John and Ico once went did this trip. They went through the Ganzu Corridor, right? Didn't you go? Yeah. To, to the the long. 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 I mean, talk about lucky. So John and Ico did the first half of the yellow, uh, the, the the black. Lally drawn line, uh, the first, the, the eastern half, the right half, uh, with their oldest son at one stage, right? That's right. But yeah, okay. What drove the Chinese in that direction? Uh, they were trying to push out the guys that were attacking. Well, well fair enough. Okay, go ahead. Is this the blood horses? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, for the longest, for a, a, a substantial period of time, they, they got the Shangdu up there. Whether the Shangnu are the same as the Han or not, no one really knows. And for Frankopan or others to say that they're the same is uh, a little overstated, I think. Um, what do, you, do you mean the Han or the yeah. Han? Han, did I say Han? Yeah. Sorry, that's, uh, that's not just, a, that's just a, not the math, that's me. <laughs> the, the, the Shangnu or the Han are, might be the same, they might not. Um, uh, in any case, they were nasty. They're the toughest. 
uh, and, and the Han for the longest time said, you know, let's just buy them all. And of course they had the best thing in the world to buy them off with and it's called silk. Um, and, then, and then it just got too expensive. And it's, or either it got too expensive or the Riga, the Han dynasty uh, people, the Rigos got the better of them and said, no, no, we, let's, let's fight them. But we can't fight them because we don't have horses. We don't have good horses. And there's this rumor that these, these fantastic horses somewhere off in the West. So off they sent the embassy to have to find the horses and they sure as hell found them. Where did they find them, by the way? In the Fergana Valley, can you, I, I don't have them. John, can you point? Can you, can you see it? The yeah. Fergana Valley, which is, uh, if you were to look at a map of Central Asia, you go, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, there, there's a place, there, there, there's Uzbekistan, and, and the various countries have some logic as, as where they're positioned. But then there's this little tongue in Uzbekistan that it sort of goes out and circles around the Fergana Valley and comes back. It was given to the uh, Uzbekis by Stalin for reasons of his own choosing. Um, and, 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 and so off they went. Um, and uh, they found the, uh, they found the blood, the sweats blood horses. And apparently when they exercise, these horses do sort of have some brain perspiration, whether that's from a parasite or some blood vessels, whatever. They're, they're, they're these gorgeous horses that, uh, or, or tough horses that were so useful to the, uh, the cavalry of the Chinese later on. Um, so, so having moved out there, they're now, the Chinese are now a major part of the Silk Road trade too. And of course, they're the only ones who know how to make silk at this stage. And it becomes by far the, the, the most expensive, the most profitable the, uh, the product that's gonna move back and forth along the Silk Road. It's not the only one. And others will figure out how to make it much earlier than some of the rumors go, but so on. Now that they've got trade, what, what, how do the Chinese uh, deal with this, this trade that they're now, that they're now, uh, uh, that is now coming their way from the, the East? Um, you remember this writing that what what they what the Chinese the Han Dynasty sets up way out there, way out there in Duwang. Um, this uh, this this gate that's not the J gate. Is it? The, the the picture on the right, John. No, the J gate's further out. But there's a there's a there if you're coming into China, you've got there's a very narrow corridor. You've got to come through a border there. And what do the Chinese do as you come through? They uh, they're so well organized that they're, they're not stamping your passport, there's no passports, but they're taking your name, they're taking your products, or they're, they're saying, if you're gonna travel through China, you really gotta go through this route. I mean, they're on top of it right off the bat. Um, that uh, you're, you're, you're only coming to China if we uh, are in control of what you're going to do. Um, this, was that, didn't you go down the sand dunes? We did. <laughs> tell, us, tell, us, tell the stories you've done the sand dunes. Well, you get, you get up to the top of the sand and then, then there's the little slats, right? That are just yeah. lying free. Right? It, it, it's a paper, um, cardboard paper. Yeah. You slid down on those things. Yeah, they're not sophisticated <laughs> slats. So you slid down those little Yeah, that's it, 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 quite spectacular. You're out in the desert now. This is the top of Mont Desert and so forth. And, and contrary to what deserts are supposed to be, from most of our point of view, they're not hot. Well, they can be hot in the summer, but they can be incredibly cold. Desert doesn't mean hot. Desert means no oh, rain, no rain, no rain. <laughs> and then there's this other picture on the right. Um, you you were there too, right? Right. I'm sure you were. And what's what's in what's behind those caves? Well, you know, this <laughs> because it's gold because it's moving. The, 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 now that it's become promoted by uh, by governments and you're building statues and you're getting people. To, uh, come throw coins in the fountain or whatever the hell. Uh, you got the uh, caves and full of statues. Yeah. I was fascinated by the picture on the right. This, this is a silly question, but those are dolls. Those are not people in front. Of them. Yeah, I know exactly. It's uh, so uh, weird. It, it is weird, and I, and I said this is a disgusting picture, but it's the best picture I can find of of the statues. <laughs> you, you notice all these. All these so-called these are not real people. <laughs> these are not statues. 
I don't know what that's all about either. Are they to scale? I mean, they yeah, yeah, they're to scale. They are to scale. Design. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, and one guy's selling ice cream. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, and 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 you find these you you find these uh, these caves with the with the Buddha statues all along this off road. Uh, it's one. Do you not think it's interesting? Well, almost maybe interesting that the Buddhists are getting larger and larger and larger. Right. But I guess they've been large for an awful long time. These they would have arrived here about the, the 400 to see here. Okay. And figures of you know, if we're going to make comparisons, because figures of Jesus so did not go this way. Well, if you get real, um, yeah. oh, <laughs> but, but it is unique, and and this point is well taken. There are many huge Buddha, and they're still being built. Today, there's one. I came across one being built in the northern part of Vietnam, at the top of ten thousand feet yeah. near Sapa oh. in the Highlands. It's just gigantic. Wow. They hadn't been finished at the time. There, there is a fifty-five foot image of Jesus in the oh. Cathedral of Light in Oakland. Uh, it, 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 it's it's produced by a, a backlit Northern Light on an opaque panel with ninety thousand. Uh, pixels, computer, uh, this, and if you haven't been to the Cathedral of Light on Lake Merritt, yes, just sir. just walk in and take a peek at the 55 foot Jesus. Oh, well, I have been, but I miss seeing it. I stand corrected. Well, <laughs> yes. <it's okay. laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you say, it's, uh, hey, it's more so something, this takes money to do. Uh, and you're going to have to have political entities that are going to contribute. It's going to all be from yeah. So, you know, all along the Silk Road are all these uh, Buddhist monks making Buddhist statues and all this and begging for food and stuff. So was it the wealth of the Silk Road that, that sustained them? Because they didn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's I, I, at least I think that's the answer, that's the answer that Frankenstein and others would promote. It's it's like the story of the Mecca that we'll get next time. You know, what what was Mecca before Islam even existed? It's it's all it's along the Red Sea. And why why go here? But it, 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 it's a, it's an analogous story. It's along the Red Sea. The trade that that was one of the great Silk Road trade routes, and it became much more important as the Silk Road trade route once the Roman Empire fell apart. Um, and, and, the, and the trades shifted more south toward this Red Sea and the, and the Persian Gulf and so forth. Uh, and, uh, and the Mecca merchants looked around and said, you know, let's, let's, let's build a temple here and we'll tell all the tribes, they've all got their own gods, you know, they've got these clay figures, they call them gods, whatever, we don't care. And, we'll, and they can bring their gods and they can set them in this thing that we call the Kaaba. And when they're passing through as traders, they can come visit their god and pray their god. And you know, we'll sell them food, we'll sell them wine, we'll make them water. We want them to stop in Mecca rather than stop in San Jose. And so uh, we've got to build this thing. And, and similar with the Buddha statues along the way. And this is a great place to stop because uh, it's not, we can both get food and, and nourishment, but we can also pray to the Buddha. Uh, uh, so, so it's. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Yeah, yeah. Well, Muhammad was a caravan driver in yeah. his uh, first career. Uh, and his employer was a rich widow in uh, Mecca, who yeah. was 10 years, 12 years older than yeah. you. Yeah, and, and she was a merchant. She was a she was a, a real dealer. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're, we're, we're being awfully sacrilegious here, but at some level, it's lived this, you know, whatever, whatever. So the Silk Road, the Silk Road, you know, the, 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 the Chinese are now contributing in a major way. You know, it's by uh, the Han Dynasty has moved to the Farragana Valley to find horses by about 100 BCE. Now you're at the 200, 300 uh, CE common era. Um, the Silk Road is a uh, um, the, the Silk Road is increasingly well established. It's not just a single road. We all know that you've all seen the maps. It's, it's many different roads. Why is Egypt so important to Rome? Why, why without Egypt is Rome not going to be the, the uh, grain, 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 grain and wealth? 
the, the combination of grain and wealth, maybe it's the same thing, but they, they, the, 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 the farming in Italy is not good. It sets its lousy soil. And one could argue, well, yeah, but we know that the farming in, North, in, in, in France and Germany is really rather substantial. It's, it's fertile soil, they produce green crops. And why not farm up there? Well, why not farm up there when you were the Romans? All forest. It was all forest at the time. And, and boggy. It was all boggy. And they did not have, they did not have the uh, infrastructure, the, the, the technological infrastructure to drain the swamps. The Chinese did. At the, exactly, exactly, exactly. The same thing. I, I missed this. Oh, they, he said a French drain. A French drain. French drain. Yeah, French drain. Yeah, French drain. Yeah. French drain. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, the French drain is not named because of France. It's because the guy's name was France for French. <laughs> uh, he wasn't French. He was, uh, I think it was Danish, actually. Whatever. Whatever. And, and, and it won't be until that steel plow and the horse and the, and the, and the, and the chest harness that you can put on the on the uh, on the chest of a uh, a horse's but better uh, bullocks or a horses and that's got to come from China and that won't happen until uh, after the uh, black plague um, and then and then you can drain the swamps and and, and and cultivate the soil of France and Germany which is indeed very fertile once you have drained the swamps and so forth I mean that's that's how far behind Europe was at a certain stage of the game. Whereas the Chinese were, uh, once they, the, 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 so, the soils around the Yellow River Valley are, 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 are not boggy at all, but around the Yellow yeah, City they are. In any case, once, once they have conquered uh, Egypt, then of course the stories are full of the legends of Cleopatra and, and snakes and Caesar and all that stuff. But uh, what, they, what they needed was wheat. Um, and, and why did you need wheat? Well, because you had this empire and you had to feed people and, and you had these cities that were not productive. So you, uh, you had to subsidize the, 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 uh, the, the cost of bread to keep from having revolution every bloody year in Rome. And it worked, and it worked. So the, 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 the Frank of Twain wants to make this point. Those of us that are somewhat familiar, very familiar with the Western history, look, Let's be clear about where Rome looked when it looked toward uh, um, toward toward wealth. It didn't look west to Gaul or to Britain or to Germany. It looked east. That's where that's where the wealth was. Of course, it was. That's where the wealth was coming from. That's where the trade was coming from. Um, so why not just go out and conquer all the east, just as the, Rome had conquered all the west? Why did that not happen? Because they had competition, <laughs> they had this Sassanid dynasty who was well organized and well equipped and uh, able to fight back. It's not that they didn't make the attempt. Um, there's this. Uh, I, most of I, many of you, uh, most have been to Rome and you've gone down to the. What is that funny thing? That uh, not the statue, the uh, the piano, the piano thing behind it, or the wedding cake. I thought it was Mussolini's deal. Uh, no, uh, uh, Mussolini used this as a prop for sure. It's the last king, Victor Emmanuel. Uh, this, this, this is the this is the uh, Victor Emmanuel monument. It's built uh, after the unification of Italy to commemorate um, Italy being unified and, and so forth. What, what, I, I always assumed that was built between 1900 and 1940. Yeah, what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, what? Uh, it was. Uh, it was uh, I think by that time, Victor Emmanuel was like he was dead, but uh, they, they built it so forth. And, and, and that's ass Mussolini. I mean, he, he just, just to have a, a, a theater, a theatrical uh, um, stage. way of stage for him to, you know, he had over here, there was this the balcony that he stood on, it had huge crowds in this here. And this road didn't exist. That's the middle of the Roman Forum. And, <laughs> And, and he just destroyed all sorts of life, archaeological stuff so that he could drive, uh, have himself in a motor car, drive right, drive right down that road. Because what's at the end of that road? The uh, Colosseum. And uh, that, what an ass, because that, uh, when you go and you, you, you visit, you say, well, here's the forum. You say, well, that's 
part of the form, but most of it was uh, uh, under under cement. That, uh, but what's the column? It's quite famous in Rome. Trajan's column. Trajan was a an emperor in, in the one hundreds and said, I'm, I'm going east. I'm going to do what we all wanted to do. I'm going to conquer. Um, that's where the wealth is. Uh, I'm going to go east. I'm going to conquer. I'm going to fight the, uh, it wasn't the Sassanus dynasty yet. It was the Parthian, I suppose. Um, and he had some success uh, and, and, and therefore he has a victory column. But at a certain stage, he, uh, his army was defeated and returned to Rome and retreat. Um, I'm trying to remember what the hell, what was the name of what the soul? Oh, is it, have we now talked about Christianity? No, 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 no. My, my, my fault here. Oh, pardon me for. But, but Rome. Um, well, what about Rome and silk? What about Rome and silk? Um, remember what the. Um, uh, what what Franco Penn had to say about that? It's from, it's from, it's from the emperor. It's crazy. My God. <laughs> These, well, first off, our women are dressed in this stuff, and they may, not, may, not, may as well not be dressed at all. Um, and we can see every part of the body, which is, which is whatever. But secondly, we're spending way too much money on buying silk every year. It's, uh, it's, it's not that we're going completely broke, it's not good for us. But the Romans contributed stuff to the Silk uh, Road too. Like what? What were some of the famous Roman products? And Glass. Glassware, particularly for whatever reason. Um, um, the, the, the stuff that they had available from their empire. Wine, wine gets mentioned. Uh, is it that true? Yeah. Well, you know, it depends on it depends on who. When we were in Georgia last year, they claimed to be the ones that invented wine. <laughs> Uh, you know, the Napa, the, the, the Napa Indians probably claim the same thing. So uh, I, I think I think the answer is yes. And so some of so it was a handful of full of wine. You could, it'll still store for a while, I suppose, red wine. But the stuff from Arabia that they've got, uh, the Romans don't go completely broke on, on, on them. What's, why do I have this up here? Oh, coins. The, uh, the, Kushan, the, the Kushan Empire was full of Roman coins, just like the Greeks and the Romans. And the, so they contributed a lot of that stuff. And then there's, uh, to, 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 to come up to date, because we, we got to get them on stage to talk about Zoroastrianism. The Sassanid Empire. I mean, this is, a, this is a very big deal if you're a person or live in this area. Um, and the, and, the, and the empire that will follow it, the Samanid, S-A-M-A-N-I-D, empires. These are rather big deals, not just for the Iranians, but for human culture, because it, it, it's this empire and the one that will follow that will uh, uh, subsidize all the intellectual stuff that goes on that is uh, monumentally important to our modern life, like algebra and algorithms and understanding of human medicine and yada, yada, yada. That's, uh, and then, and the, the correct distance from the earth to the moon and the fact that the earth is no, it's not flat, blah, blah, blah. Um, they, they, why is, this so, why is the, the existence of Rome going to be fundamental to the growth of this great empire? Because the Silk Road trade passed through this territory on its way to Rome. And, uh, and they weren't stupid, they took advantage of it and said, you know, <laughs> we can tax this trade along the way, we can, we can be in charge of it along the way. And it's an empire that will last 400 years and uh, is really uh, one of the more impressive empires in human history, I suppose. A very centralized government, highly educated bureaucracy, um, uh, trade which is controlled uh, just like the Han, just like the Han Dynasty, you know, we will tell you where the markets are. We will produce the taxes. Um, and a culture will develop here that will have an enormous influence on uh, on Islam. In fact, this is where Islamic culture, to a large degree, comes from. Um, but it's a serious culture. Uh, so, so the, 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 the Sassanids are. Well, to make the point, what is the point? <laughs> I, I'm trying to get to the i trying to get to the, the religions. That's what. Uh, so they um, they're selling lots of things into the into the Silk Road, and now we move to the uh, this road of faith.
And I, I added this, I don't know if anyone had a chance to read this. This came, this came late. Um, one night I said, Janet, look, I've got this whole video. I got this whole lecture from, from the great, what are those called? The, the great courses? Great, great, course, great courses. Yeah, I've never, never watched this thing. Let's, let's watch this thing. It was bloody fascinating. Why I never watched this, I don't know. Um, the, the, you've heard this term before from me or from others, the axial age, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's out there these days to be taught. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not uncommon for uh, even high school students who have heard about the axial age. It's a, it's, a, it's a mental creation by uh, Carl Jaspers, a German uh, uh, theologian, uh, archaeologist kind of combination. And say, look, it, 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 it's about this time that you have, it, it, it's, it's more than, let's go down here. It's really rather amazing. Oh, God, I went too far, sorry. I mean, these, these people are all around on Earth, sort of, not exactly at the same month, <laughs> but in the same... In the same time period as Zoroaster and, and the Manichaeism in, in Persia, Mahavira, who will be the, uh, the founder of Jainism, which is this this is the source of of, of, of peaceful protest, nonviolent protest. It isn't Buddhism. Buddha, the Upanishads, uh, the Hinduism changing, uh, the, some of the more important prophets in the Old Testament. The, this is when the Old Testament is first written down uh, as, a, as a written parchment. Uh, in Greece, you got Socrates, Confucius, yada, yada, yada. They're all, they're all sort of alive, more or less at the same time. I mean, here's uh, I mean, if you look at those slides, you, you, you can't even see from where you're sitting. I can't from, from here either. But the the enormous number of people uh, whose names we're very familiar with us as far as uh, religions and philosophical thought, all more or less at the same time. So what's well, what was going on then? Um, uh, one of the arguments has been, well, civilizations, because of the Silk Road, have started to bump into one another. And as you bump into one another, your belief systems get challenged, if you're willing to accept the challenge and say, you know, <laughs> this stuff that we've taken for granted is truth that's being challenged by other points of view, and we need to sort of think this through and this and that. But this, this guy that was giving this lecture said, yeah, there's that for sure, but there's also something else going on. In his argument, I don't know if you read this or not, he said, it's about this time that at least in the Indo-European area of the, of, of, uh, of the Silk Road, you're starting to have that branch of Indo-Europeans. The Indo-Europeans will move in all directions. They'll go into Europe and become Germans. They'll go into uh, the, the, the Indian, become uh, the Hindus. Uh, the, but they'll go into Greece and become Greeks. And, but there's also another branch that's moving almost directly south into Mesopotamia. And he said, as they did, they, they, things, things changed. All the religious festivals that existed up to that time were basically concerned with what he labels cosmic maintenance. What the hell is that? It makes sure that make sure that the things that make that keep that they keep rain keeps coming. They, 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 we have to have this, and they're, they're centrally organized, and we need to work. we have to make sacrifice so lands, and sacrifice? we have to sacrifice if you're lions, we have to sacrifice for human beings. I mean, we are dependent on nature, and we have to make sure that we satisfy nature's needs. Through ceremonies, and maybe it's just symbolic, but maybe it's real. He it says, and it shifts all over the Silk Road area to uh, religious systems and/or philosophical systems that say, you know, we we have to move away from that. We got to ask individuals to behave good, to behave well, to choose good over evil, which was not what religions did, and we sort of know that from history that we re can record because. When we got to the Mayans and the Incas and so forth, and, and, and the Native Americans, they were all doing cosmic maintenance. That was what they did. Um, um, and I said, what, what, what's, what was going on? And we have some records of that. He says, is it once, once these migrating tribes started moving into more civilized areas and more civilized, more affluent areas, more urban, more this and that and so forth, 
and became more associated with the enormous amount of wealth, a lot of them just went rogue and became um, nasty people, violent. They became cattle rustlers, uh, they robbed. Um, and, and the priests got really concerned about this and said, we, we, we've got to shift gear here and start talking about individual behavior uh, as th this, this temptation of wealth is causing our civilization to sort of fall apart. Um, and in fact, it did. Uh, these civilizations are all going to move. Uh, all the tribal civilizations, as they get closer and closer to urban areas, you're going to have the promotion of individual values, um, worship of individualism. That <laughs> blah, blah, blah. A, now, how much of that you're willing to buy? To, 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 you have to make up your own mind. Um, but he started looking around and saying, "This is this is not an unusual point of view." To say that there is this dramatic shift, and we're well familiar with it because we know these religions that ask us to do that: choose the right path, choose the moral path. Um, uh, and, and 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 you'll you get this. You'll get the same in China. In China, it will not have anything to do with religion going to heaven or hell. It'll be for other reasons. And he said, in every case, in every as area of the Silk Road, the this. Uh, this shift was preceded by eras which uh, go down in human history as pretty violent. Um, in, in, in Western Asia, around the, uh, Egypt, the Middle East, the, the Tigris Euphrates Valley, this was the era of the Assyrians who were just nasty people. I mean, violent, um, uh, brutal. Uh, there was no uh, talk about right or wrong. Uh, in Greece, it's the Dark Age, uh, and it's called that in, in the history books, uh, between the Classical Age, which was on uh, mostly centered on Crete and so forth, until you get to the city states later, it's the heroic age of, of Homer and, uh, and, and, and warriors and this and that, whether they were lionized or, 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 or discredited or whatever. It's the Vedic Age in North India, just this is when the Mahu Bharati is written. In China, it's the, warring, the period of warring states before before the emperor who has the all the, the, the terracotta soldiers pulls China together, but he's so violent that he's overthrown. Um, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating moment. Um, I'm going backwards here. And, and, I mean, there's the, on the right, if you look at this line, you go, you kind of shake your head and say, good God. <laughs> Was there a single Indo-European language in some state north of the Caucasus? Probably not, but maybe. And all these groups that we're so familiar with, who will go off to uh, to become Buddhist. I mean, the the the, the founders of Hinduism in, in India, or go to Iran and that's Persia, or to Greece and become the Hellenic, or to the areas that we now call Italy or Germany, or uh, not not to mention the Tokarian speakers who are who will later become the Kushans who uh, move back to India. All these are Indo-European languages. Which uh, have cognates that are also recognized. That he does. It's particularly that group that is circled in the in the, in the red that is moving directly south into Mesopotamia, and they and, and the priests say we we need to change gears here. Um, uh, and and the, 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 the the thought that someone a set of people got together in a seminar and made that decision is of course idiotic, but uh, it, it got made anyway. Um, and, and, and it did all over, uh, all over this, uh, uh, the Silk Road. On top of that, of course, you've also got the issue that we've already discussed that all of these empires, whether it's Rome or Greece or the Persian empires or the Indian empires in, in, around the Ganges Valley or the Han Dynasty, the Tang Dynasty, they all needed some sort of spiritual, intellectual, religious glue that would hold people together now that you're going to have a quite wide, long, big geographic area that you're trying to rule and hold people that really don't have much of us, a whole lot in common together. And see, here's, as you may be familiar with this quote, it was, it was crowded space. You had all these, all these religions and thought patterns uh, uh, competing for who was going to win. Uh, and, and there were strong incentives for rulers to uh, to adapt one that was going to be the most effective. And you know, already put that up there. 
they're all around a similar similar time to you. So Buddhism first. Um, Buddhism is going to Buddha has, has has been promoted by there, there almost certainly was a guy named Siddhartha or something like that in around 500 600 BCE. His teachings lingered there for a while. They won't go much of anywhere except for a few people that will uh, practice them. And then Ashoka comes along. Well, why is, what's so important about Ashoka? Why is he a key to Buddhism being in spring? He adopts it. He'll adopt it. He'll adopt it. And, and what his motivations are, we'll never know. But he says, or it is said for him, that he was so horrified by the killing and death that was necessary to unify Northern India that he accomplished that he uh, converted to Buddhism and, and promoted it big time with these, these columns that are still all over. You can find them, they're dotted around India here and there. They all talk about peace and, and preserve the environment and Buddhist kind of stuff. So he will get it started. Um, he's gone, meander off to the, the further west, um, will uh, claim to be not just a king, but a, a Buddhist savior. The, uh, the, the, the Kushans beloved by some of us, go even further <laughs> uh, in, in their promotion of Buddhism. Um, uh, and they, these, are, these are, the Kushans, you wanna you want do it, John? You wanna, I'm, I'm, I'm talking so much. Who the hell are the Kushans? Yeah. Well, they were the last Indo-European tribe to come out of the steppes. They, they are faced, they're up against the Zhang Nu. They're way up there, they're in what is now Uyghur territory. And at some stage, um, for, for reasons probably of climate, they get pushed. And they push, they're pushed west toward uh, Central Asia, and they migrate south because there's wealth there, and they will run India for a couple hundred years. And they adopt Buddhism. Um, and, they, and they promote it, they not only promote it, uh, but they claim themselves to be direct descendants of Buddhism. And they will start, they'll be the first to do this stuff. They'll start creating statues and creating a monumental art. Uh, and, and so the, the, the poses of the Buddha that we're familiar with, you know, whether it's peace or, or righteousness or whatever, uh, all of this starts to show up with the Kushans. And having shown up, it will be adopted by others and say, this is effective. I'm gonna adopt the Buddhism too and promote it and move it on. So there's an interesting line between Arjuna who, okay, I let the arrow go, and Ashoka, who has grieved after he, he lets the arrow go and, and converts to uh, Buddhism, which is really a reform movement of Hinduism. Yeah, and, and after, after Buddhism, and, and of course it'll fall, it'll more or less disappear in India because after all, Hinduism is so entrenched, but it will make Hinduism much different. It's a, it's a, a dramatically different religion after uh, Buddhism has come and gone in India. Buddhism will survive in lots of other places, but it will disappear more or less in India. But, but the Hinduism that's left is much more moral, much more centered toward individual behavior and individual choice, and less about cosmic maintenance. Um, and, and so all this stuff is happening uh, all on the soap of the Saudi merchants. It's convenient for them after they're just merchants, but why is conversion to Buddhism such a, a a clever idea. Well, um, you know, got a lot of other Buddhists along the way too. This is, makes trade easier. Uh, furthermore, there's all these stack, there's all these monuments being built uh, every about a day's travel from another day's travel. Um, if you've ever gone to Chinese museums and seen that these famous Tom guy, see those those are those are so those are Saudi and the merchants on Camelback, and you can go to the one on the left about five miles away, there's the Black Hawk Museum. They have got a fantastic, if you've never been, you should really should go sometime. The, the, the museum there, which I thought, Jen and I thought, I thought it was nothing but old cars. There are a lot of old cars there, but up top, the, 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 the top of it, they've got a, a great Chinese uh, section. So the, 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 the link between religion and trade, I, I think is useful because trade is really built on uh, trustworthiness and credit. Um, and if you're dealing with a co-religionist like the Sardians were, or uh, like the Sufis were, or 
like the Jews in, in uh, uh, Europe and Northern Africa. Well, and then on the, on the, on the so for a trade as well, yeah, 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 it, it, or it later becomes Islam. You know, I'm, yeah, I don't really care about Islam, but uh, all my all, all my products, all my products is coming from some from Islamic territory. I may as well convert, or at least pretend to convert. So Buddhism will, as 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 you know, it will work its way to China, not across the Himalayas. That's not going to happen. You got to go first west. Um, and you get around the Himalayas through the Hindu Kush and so forth, and eventually end up in China. And you get, as you've seen before, these incredible Buddhist uh, statuaries, including that rather large one. Um, mm. They talk about a big Buddha. That's <laughs> the one whose toes got wet when they had the floods the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah that's, that's, what, that's, that's what those, uh, now those are real people standing there. <laughs> yeah, it, it was Jan, we were, the four of us were there on a rainy day and going down that set of ladders on the left was not only bad if it was just you yourself, but was 18 uh, impatient Chinese pushing you down the ladder. <laughs> 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 And if they were right below you, he said, ah, oh, yeah, boy, you got to foot this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Zoroaster, Zoroaster. You know, you've, we've all heard the name. Zoroaster, Zoroaster is, Zoroastrianism is going to play the role for the Sassanid dynasty that Buddhism will play for some, or the Kushans, for example, or Confucianism for the Han dynasty, or Christianity for or, uh, Constantinople, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there, it's 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 a it's the same story. Um, the, the Zoroastrianism becomes con a convenient uh, foil for the Sassanids. For one, Zoroastrianism had existed before they come into power, so you want to claim this because it, it gives you some um, uh, a sense of, of connection back to the Achaemenid. Uh, <laughs> Achaemenid up empire. Um, and furthermore, it's promoting values that you wouldn't promote yourself anyway. So here's some of the, if, if you went to this before, you've seen this before. Some of the rather interesting aspects of Zoroastrian belief system, that there's a seven stage creation story. Now it's not days, but it is a seven stage. What, what is it that the, the, the number seven? What's the what's the likely what what's what's a cosmological possibility there that's sort of widely believed? I think sun, moon, and the five planets you can see: Mercury, Venus. Uh, no, you can't see Earth. You're on there. <laughs> Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. And you got seven. Uh, and you look up at the heavens and you can see them. Uh, you can't see Neptune, you can't see the, the stars are, are fixed in place. They move, um, they appear to move, and some actually do. In any case, the seven stage, a dualistic cosmology, there's good and there's evil. Uh, an eschatology that says, here's the perfect, the universe is going somewhere. It's not just cycles. It's going to a battle between good and evil. Um, there is a single good God out there, a single good God. His name is uh, Ahura Mahasta. Um, there's also a story about human beings being just too nasty. They follow themselves. The God, Ahura Mahasta got angry. They didn't produce a flood. Instead, he produced a great freeze to produce and reproduce the population. It, it, this, is, this was around, this is around. Um, and uh, and the Hora Mazda, here's a symbol for Mazda, what the wings mean, whatever. But of the, of the various uh, belief systems that you're supposed to adhere to if you're a good Zoroastrianism, a bunch of stuff, this and that, and so forth. And, you know, and I'm speaking softly because it's, it's pretty obvious, yeah? Where, where, where this stuff's going, <laughs> where the Zoroastrian belief system is going. They're, they're, they were not fire worshippers. They didn't worship fire. Fire was a symbol, just like water was a symbol. Fire was a symbol of wisdom. Water was a symbol of, a, of where the symbol wisdom came from. But they did keep these fires burning all the time. 
Um, and there are still four asteroids today. Uh, there aren't many left. There's there are probably more in uh, India than there are in, in Iran. Um, and if you just, the, this is the same lecture, the same guy that we were watching from the great one of the courses to say, well, you know, you cannot make, you cannot prove, it's impossible to prove that Judaism and Christianity were, were direct cotton, were, were, were influenced by Zoroastrianism. But there is this stuff. There is, for example, the fact that there's certain aspects of Judaism that will show up in Christianity that weren't there in Judaism until the Babylonian captivity. There's a moment when the, uh, the Achaemenid Empire, uh, ruled by nasty people, conquers Jerusalem and they take the most of the religion, the, the, not every Jew has to leave, but the religious leaders, Jewish religious leaders are taken to Babylon and they're kept in captivity um, for nearly uh, 70 years or more. It's only then that the Old Testament is written down and it's only after that, theoretically with lots of exposure to Zoroastrianism, that uh, Judaism starts uh, having a uh, promoting uh, teaching a, a rather another linear view of history with a day of judgment when your moral qualities are going to be determining whether which direction you're going and a more assertive belief in heaven and hell and, uh, and some discussion about the, a, 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 a messiah down the road that some call the book of Daniel the, the son of man and you can do with that what you want but some of us would say Pretty convincing to me that this uh, these monotheistic religions probably started may have started around uh, in, in Persia. There was also another one, Man Manichaeism, which has uh, sort of disappeared more or less, but was beloved by the Germanic warriors for a while. It, it's just a uh, it, it promoted also from uh, from. Uh, from Persia, uh, a, a belief in the battle between light and darkness, but it sort of disappeared over time. So there's the Rastrianism, and then there's Christianity. And to his credit, uh, the, the, the Frank Capone's gonna say, yeah, okay, we're, whether we're Christian or not, or even believe in Christianity or not, they're, they're, we're mostly familiar with the journey of St. Paul. Um, he was not one of the original apostles, uh, but he is uh, one of the guys going to end up in Rome and uh, found Rome and so forth. And, and so we, St. Paul, St. Paul, St. Paul's church, St. John's, so she's, what about all the other apostles? What, did, did they do anything? And the answer is, yeah, most of them went east. And when we were in Georgia and Romania last night, we bumped into them. We didn't bump into them. You know, <laughs> and there's a lot of old people in those places. Uh, yeah, most of them went east um, or south, uh, and uh, and Frank and Penn would say, "Yeah, of course they did. That's where civilization was. If you wanted to recruit, uh, you went. To, I mean, there's Andrew and Simon Peter and names that you know. I, I, I my family didn't do much churchifying, so this is all later stuff for me. Luke, Mark, and Mark; those apostles were not uh, among the original twelve. Um, and, you know, and they had quite a bit of success, frankly, converting many of these Eastern Europeans along the Silk Road to Christianity, not the version of Christianity that we're familiar with. Um, Christ was part of it, for sure, you yeah. uh, so, know. So why is that not part of Christian history that we're taught? Well, for obvious reasons. Uh, um, when we were Armenia, for example, um, we, we went down in that pit. What's in that pit? Well, that's where Gregory the Illuminator was thrown in the pit for, uh, was it 14, 12 to 14 years, snakes down there and scorpions. And he was thrown there because he wouldn't he wouldn't obey the, uh, the king of Romania's religious beliefs. But then the king of Romania himself um, was full of diseases. Frank of Penn says he was turned into a pig, whatever. And he was cured by, uh, um, uh, by, by he was cured by, <laughs> By Gregory the Illuminator, and so Armenia became the first Christian nation on the face of the earth. So the Armenians say probably correct. The other, the other story is, on the other hand, is you do have uh, in all the churches uh, the icons of uh, the of, of Thaddeus and Bartholomew, a couple of, of the other um, this, uh, disciples. Um, 
uh, most we all pretty much know Christian uh, the Constantinople's story. He's about to have a battle with his chief rival. If he beat, if he wins this battle, he is now con he now controls all of the Roman Empire. It's at a bridge across the Tiber River. He sees a so the story goes. He sees a red Christian cross in the sky before the battle. He wins the battle. He can burst to Christianity. Well, maybe, uh, but there's other possibilities um, for why he converted. Georgia a couple of years later, uh, similar stories. Uh, and, and here the, this, the apostle is, uh, is St. Andrew. And, 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 and so all this happens in, in, as Christianity is evolving early, early on, as well as it's evolving in Rome. At this moment, the Christians are being persecuted like crazy in the Sassanid Empire because the Christians seem to be so unified and so powerful. Um, uh, there's a lot of... And, 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 then, and then we can move on to, to the rest of the stuff. I, I'm just, I, I didn't intend to do all this. I, the intention was to stop it. What, what of this is disappointing? Or you want to say, I don't believe this. This is nonsense. This is a, what it, when you read this, the, what was your reaction to, to, uh, to, to this information about Christianity being, Christianity in particular, being so, well, d diverse? So uh, fragmented, um, so uh, uh, used by Constantine, for example, as a as a, as a clue to hold Roman together, or is that say, yeah, I, I sort of knew this stuff. This is not really small. Yeah. Constantly evolving, and all through history, it's continually evolved. Today, it's evolved. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What and why so? Why do religions evolve? Is it just because we have well, new inputs? <laughs> Stubborn people. To keep, to keep the people interested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, things change. Uh, and 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 then and, and if you can if you've got a if you got a if you've got a good sales job, if you got a good sales pitch, uh, you went for a while. Uh, it's not forever. Um, uh, it's, 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 okay, let's, let's talk a little bit about that, that divergence of Christianity because it is fascinating how Christianity was very successful in the steps for quite some time. What will, of course, end that success utterly? Islam. Islam will be more successful. Uh, and, and, and it's not primarily because. Uh, because uh, the people are converted by the sword. That, there's almost none of that. That's just, that, that's hogwash from Western, uh, from, from the Crusades and the Crusaders who got their asses kicked. Uh, there, uh, there was very little of that to convert. I mean, that's going on now, I'll grant you. Um, <laughs> uh, with ISIS and idiot, and idiots like that, the Taliban and blah, blah, blah. But there was very little of that early on. See, this might be just a little off topic, but um, since the Huns are so uh, prominently uh, noted there, <laughs> you know, uh, I've often wondered what, <clears throat> what really explains the uh, Huns as a culture and, you know, Attila as supposedly the fiercest uh, warrior of all time and ever. And, and, you know, I'm fascinated with that. And then, and not that I know a lot about it, just sort of statements and, and a little bit of brief history like that maybe a little more about they get flash forward uh what is it 800 maybe or so years to the mongols and the khan tribes you know that that they conquered so much of the world and, and supposedly the mongol empire was the largest uh geographic empire uh, of all time in history i mean what what explains all that? Do you think it is? As you can a, you can add you can add the Vikings to that as well. Um, yeah, um, um, just to not blame it all on Asians. Uh, um, but are those the answers to that? What's going on? What? Why? Why? Well, there was a, a book review in today's Wall Street Journal called "Powers and Thrones" by the author is Dan Jones, and, and one of the things in the book review explain why it was that the Huns came when they came. They were pushing on the Romans and they were pushing on the 
um, versions at the same time. Basically, according to the book and the book review, there was a huge drought yeah. Yeah. for like a period of 20 years. That's that's well, that's 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 and they were stronger than all the others guys that ran. Who was running from the Huns? Yeah, the the, the Vandals, the Visigoths, the Ostrogoths, uh, the the Alans, All these people that became, to some degree, our ancestors, or at least some of our ancestors, um, uh, were the Germans, for that matter. We're all running like hell from the Huns. They, so what? So the question maybe is what 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 made these guys? And the far Mongolian deserts and uh, Mongolian steppes and forests, the toughest warriors on the face of the earth. Yeah. And the, the answer appears to be partly is that, that you get the worst, you get the nastiest living conditions uh, on the face of the earth. You got to be tougher than hell. And, right. and you, you, you live on your pony um, to the point that, as Frank O'Pan said, these guys were so deformed that they they were, they, were, they looked like the midgets walking around with their legs bowed, and, uh, and that's from riding horses uh, all the time, all, the all time. day long. Uh, you know, yeah. and, and and the horses were the toughest horses on the. They weren't big. They were not. They were relatively relatively small. Well, Jack, that we see as a, a form of technological superiority. You don't think of a horse as part of mentality, but if you yeah. mobilize, they had stirrups. Europeans right. didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Europeans didn't have stirrups, uh, and you could, you know, you, so you could you could fire a a, a, a curved bow, uh, a double curved bow, which the Europeans didn't have either. Yeah. Um, uh, and you've been doing it since you were three years old, so you're pretty good at it. And 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 on top of that, you were just nasty. Uh, yeah. I mean, you you either surrender surrender or we kill you. You've got two choices. We'll probably kill you anyway, but at least you've got half of a chance if you surrender. Um, and uh, uh, and a, a, a culture like that cannot will not survive for very long, and none of them do. They will they run out of steam. They're 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 held together by an incredibly charismatic leader who themselves got enormously interesting histories. Um, and, you know, once that guy's dead, there's infighting. Uh, they don't have the they don't have the bureaucracy. To, they're they're. They're, they're rapists. They're rapists. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they're violent. Um, it is ironic, of course, that once the Mongols have got control of that whole set, they then said, well, that's, now let's just settle down. There's a whole lot of money they need. Um, and they do, uh, and said, and we will not abide the violence. And the, 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 the Silk Road explodes again after the Mongols, but not for a time afterwards. I mean, it's just, None of us, I think, can conceive of. Uh, I mean, if we were novels, we see books of, of, of the horrendous violence that well, this would have would have happened here. I mean, the cities of Central Asia—they're just they're probably not a million people there, but they, they, they say they were all killed. Uh, you left one guy, and then you put up a pile of skulls to uh, to prove that we were here. And and you and you send someone down the road to say, and then if you don't surrender, it's the same as it happened to you. It's probably going to happen anyway. At least you got half a chance. And and the other thing, it wouldn't have been it, it wouldn't been the case. Well, maybe maybe it was the case at this moment. It was certainly the case with the Mongols. They were overpopulated. There were too damn many of them. They had to move. And uh, said, well, this is convenient. And, and uh, you now we're moving. And they were insulted by a couple of people. Right? And, and Ramsey, wasn't it, wasn't the story pretty much repeated somewhat with the cons? You know, Genghis Khan. All Absolutely. The way Khan, but the, 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 the but the Vikings too. The Vikings were just awful. I mean, they yeah. were horrid people, um, and they scared the hell out of. <laughs> and and they, they, they show up. The Vikings will show up in the next two chapters. Um, and it's like, wait a minute, aren't they socialists now? I'm just, what, <laughs> what, 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 how did that happen? <laughs> they spent too much time in France. Yeah, they spent too much time in France. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. I, 
Yeah, uh, the, 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 the tip, the um, fragility of life at that moment in human history, yeah. uh, for almost all of human history, frankly, has been uh, uh, the way life was. Um, and, 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 and so you were ready to adopt religions that might give you some hope when you were dead, because you're probably going to be killed pretty soon anyway. And, and so did the Huns have any religion? No. Other than killing me? They had, they had the, this cos the, 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 the cosmic maintenance stuff. You know, here's the, the we got a, a, a rain god and we got a thunder god. You, you go to the Norse god, it's almost the same thing. We're still There's a lot of the week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Thursday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah. I, it's, so, 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 to back to, yeah. Yeah, as, as Frank Pan says, I know, I know that's any help at all. It's, it, 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 I mean, when you're, when you're, when these guys could ride uh, 40 miles a day and sleep in their sack, I mean, um, well, ask Putin. Uh, he'll tell you. <laughs> I, 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 who, who's the only country to really ever conquer Russia? It's the Mongols. I mean, Napoleon couldn't. Hitler couldn't. I mean, you could say that Lenin surrendered. That's fair. But the, the Russians would have fought on in World War One uh, if he hadn't surrendered. And he knew damn well he was going to get it back anyway. It, it, it's a uh, um, and, and who are the and who are who are the Russians anyway? Are they half Viking? I mean, what am I, I, a, they, they are partially. I mean, and where was their first? And where was their first city? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Putin's got an argument. It's a crappy argument. But when he talks, he, he might want to bring up the Monroe Doctrine uh, when he has that argument. Yeah. Uh, what's the Monroe Doctrine? The Americas are ours, yeah. and you keep your hands off. Uh, it's, uh, we're, we're about to go to Costa Rica uh, pretty soon, and I was reminded by my brother, oh, you've got to go here, because this, remember, this is where William Walker, an American who took over Nicaragua and reestablished slavery in the 1850s. This is where he was headed when the Costa Ricans conquered him. And, uh, and he, was, he was a hero in the South of the United States, but uh, you know. We're civilized. It's it's, so, who, who was running? Who was running from the Huns? <laughs> the people that became Ostrogoths. I mean, there were already Romans there. They're going to intermarry with the uh, the Vangles and the Goths, uh, the Vangles and the and the Visigoths and the Ostrogoths and who the hell are those people? And they're not enough time. But these guys were. They say, let let us in for God's sake. Let us in. <laughs> we're, we're, the Huns are going to kill us. And how, how long was the Hun Empire? Not long. Not I mean, long. It seems like. It was, it was it very hard to maintain. No, what it was impossible to maintain. And when, when and once and once uh, until it got into what's now sort of hungry and hung around for a while, uh, it, it, it didn't work because his, his whole the whole society was set up for grazing animals and there wasn't enough to graze. And so they went back out into the steps and then they got drunk and died. And you know, and, and it was over. Uh, that the, those those fragile civilizations don't last very long. They're but not so we have to call it an empire, though. I mean, how, we'd have to leave a number of people in all these. No, you, you would you, to call it an, to call it a a Rome a Hunnic a Hunnic empire, not real, but a Mongol empire makes sense because that went on for three or four generations. Um, but longer than that, if you want to count other people. So 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 the the the, 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 the West is going to go and and be. A mess for quite for hundreds of years. Meanwhile, in Persia, they do better. I mean, they're going to be threatened by the Huns as well. But what's what's one of the reasons they are able to to uh, defend themselves somewhat better against the the, the ravaging Huns? They built a wall. Because they built a wall. They built a wall. Yeah. And, and of course, the Romans could have said, well, "We've got one too. It's up there in Scotland." And then the Huns said, "We don't want to go to Scotland. We have no interest in Scotland whatsoever." <laughs> they, they built their wall. And apparently, you can still see this wall. There's fragments of it all over the place if, uh, if you know where to go. But doesn't Franco Pan make the point that uh, Rome and Persia cooperate? Yeah, they tried to cooperate. Yeah. yeah, of course they did. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, uh, and and, and uh, it was, uh, but it was too late. The, the, all the things that were going wrong with the Roman Empire had uh, cascaded, uh, including the smallpox epidemic that he doesn't talk about at all and so forth. And so, 
And so for, did, did you catch this? Frank Offen says, you know, it's, it's commonplace. Now I know it's commonplace because I taught this stuff. To say, well, you know, it really wasn't dark ages. That's such a, that's such a, that's a nasty time. It, it really there was a lot of continuity. The, 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 the royalty of the Rome, they, they left Rome, it's true, but they went out and they had estates and they had monasteries. And so it, uh, civilization sort of came through. He, he said, come on, man, this is dark. <laughs> there was, there was, there was rape and there was pillage and they forgot how they couldn't build with stone. And, uh, and, and, and no one could read. And uh, he said, if you don't want to call that dark, fine and dandy, but it's pretty, pretty, bloody, pretty bloody dark. Okay, so this, this, this may be too tedious. Janet said, don't just spend a lot of time on this. This is, this is too, too tedious. But I, I, think, I think it's kind of interesting at some level, yes. I mean, there, if you're going to promote a theology and say this theology is going to be our glue and we've got to get people to believe it, you got to get you got to get on the same page about what you're asking people to believe. So, what are some of the interesting issues that Christians had to deal with? Christ, yeah. Well, you got this same guy thing. that you call him the Son of God, but he's also God. That's a little that's a little hard to take. Uh, you can you got to work this out kind of carefully. I mean, what? So, what is Christ's nature? Is he equal to God? I mean, he was on Earth, and Mary. You really want to talk about a virgin for them? Did she did she give birth to a, a human being or to a god or to both? Of which there was all that that was. If you if you get people are going to ask that question. I, okay, I can deal with God. What? Yeah, you know, and he died for me, and I mean to go to heaven. Yeah, um, Holy Ghost. Yeah, Holy Ghost. You have to talk to the Catholics to figure out the Holy Ghost. I can't. I, I, I can never get the Holy Ghost straight. I can. And, and, and then you have to put together a whole, you have to put together an entire uh, bureaucracy of the church. Who's going to be in charge? What's that person's relationship to the, 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 the secular leader? Uh, we're going to have some, we're going to have some, uh, some holiday. Our most important holiday for sure is going to be Easter. But it can't be the same as, as Passover, that, because then we'll be just copying Jews, so it can't be Passover. So we've got to sort this all out. And, and that, that, that we're making too much light of it, I suppose, but it would have been a serious issue. So the Constantine calls the Council of Nicosia, certain things are certain things are, uh, are decided right there. There's the, the oath, the, 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 the oath that you're supposed to say, the Nicene Creed, I believe in this and that. I believe that this that the God is, that Christ is co equal to God. But Arianism is pronounced as, as heresy. Arian, what's what was the Arian was around? He was rather popular. As you're going to see in a minute here. Quite popular. Um, what did Arian, what did Arian say about Christ? Not 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 God. Just as human being, the best human being we've ever seen, but just a human being. And uh, this is declared uh, non a, a heresy. We can't we can't have that. Um, they also work out uh, who's going to who's going to be in charge with the relationship between the king. The decision by Constantine, of course, is I will be the head of the state and the head of the church, and that's still supposedly the case uh, in, in parts of uh, in parts of uh, uh, Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Um, uh, and, and Easter, they they said, well, we decided it's not going to be the same as Passover, but. Uh, we're not quite sure how we're going to sort it out. And of course, does anyone know how Easter decided? What is that? Have you ever worked that out? It is odd, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyone, anyone, uh, boy, would spend the time on this. It's kind of fun. Though. What's the hell does it work? I looked it up once and I forgot. The you go, you go to, you got it, you get to the equinox. Yeah. So, so you're starting after the first full moon after the equinox it's it's the it's very good you get to the equinox and then you say well what after the equinox what's the first sunday after you when's the first full moon and, and and so you can't you can't have it before the first full moon and then after you found the first full moon what's the first sunday after the equinox after the first full moon and of course that you, you can you have a variation it can be almost a month so it's a, how they came up with that formula? I, yeah. Then there's Ramadan. And then, <laughs> well, well, Ramadan actually makes sense. 
because yeah. because because they have it in a calendar. Exactly. So the year the year is only three hundred and fifty days. So and it, it runs around the well because the, because 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 if it's three hundred fifty days in this month, the the, the the Islamic months are all thirty. No, they're a combination of thirty and twenty nine. They're a combination of 20, 30 and 29. I think they I think they, they go back and forth. One yeah. month is 30, yeah. one is 29. And they're always the same, 30 and 29, 30. So you don't come up with 365. You come up with a year. So the, the, the first the first year is different than the year. The first, whatever. But, so, so I mean, the, 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 a lot of these uh, Goths loved, um, they, they thought that the Arianism made perfect sense to them. Oh yeah, God and Christ is just a good human being. But they sort of slowly got over that as they had to, the, the, you know, what beat out of them. Um, so, so then there's a question. The, the story is said, oh, okay, how he, he sort of came back at the same idea. He said, you know, let's talk about God, Christ being a, a very good person, maybe the, sort of the son of God. Uh, but not quite equal, and that was declared uh, not, not a non-go. Sure enough, Nestorianism was the most popular force of Christianity all the way across the, the Silk Road. It, I, 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 insulting somebody, it does make more sense, doesn't it? I mean, this, this human being, or it's, it's easier to swallow. Christ was a good human being. He wasn't the son of God. Um, uh, we should, he's an example of behavior, good behavior. What are, the, what, are, what are they setting up for? They're setting up the whole belief system for Islam. Because that's exactly what Islam says, right? Well, it's also what Judaism says. And, and Judaism too. And, but, but Islam is going to be the, the force that's going to win. Because that's exactly what Islam is going to say. Basically, the Christians were, the group of Christians, we, we believe everything Christians do. It's just that you can become corrupt. And this God stuff, you know, we believe Jesus was a wonderful person, one of the one of the one of the one of the, uh, um, one of the prophets, but not the Son of God. In any case, so you've got all the way across to China. <laughs> um, you can see this in Xi'an. In fact, I think we did. Uh, uh, is that no? Am I wrong about that? Yeah, this 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 is a a, a Nestorian uh, piece of, uh, of whatever in Xi'an, China. Um, so, <laughs> And the church, and then you get down to a real nitty gritty. And other people say, "Okay, let us let us take another shot at." Um, there's two sets of beliefs here. One, but, and that, so Christ is going to Christ is, is both God and 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 human. What's the nature of that of those two properties? Are they so unified that they are a single, a new kind of thing? There's a, a God human kind of quality, and that's in Christ. Or are they say they're both in Christ, but they're separate? What's the answer to that? And uh, and the, the, the Council of Chalcedon said it's what I it's the second one. They're together in Christ, but they are separate properties, and they they are not combined. And one set of people said, We don't believe it, we believe they're combined. And he said, that's so sick. Are you, you gonna fight about that? Say, yeah, <laughs> now that we're gonna fight, we're leaving. And so, you got all these branches of Christianity Ethiopia, Syria, uh, Egypt, uh, um, uh, in, in India, Armenia. What we were Armenia, that's, that's what they believe. And you say, Well, this is so, so silly and insignificant, but you say, Yeah, because don't you get it? This has not got anything to do about religion, it's got to do with our national self identity. And it needs to be different from yours so that we are different from you and, uh, and yada, yada, yada. Well, no one said that, but that's kind of what's going on. And so, and so by the time Christianity is split into all these different diversions, it is no longer a problem for the Sassanids in Persia. There's just so many versions. Uh, uh, and so the Sassanid, done, the Sassanid uh, Empire there, in, uh, which is going to survive in, uh, in, in what we now call Persia for 400 years. And, Promote learning and promote cities and and then and, and trade and benefit from trade. Well, now it's going to benefit like trade like crazy, because there is no the, the, the many of the trade routes will stop here in in, in, uh, in Persia. There's no uh, well, there's there's the Byzantine Empire. I'm wrong about that. I'm wrong about that. And the Sogdians. This is a kind of sad story. This is a this is a this is a group of people that uh, you know, they, they were the merchants. They were the great linguists. 
They could, uh, they traveled up and down the Silk Road. They had family members at every stage you put along the way. They could find money and loans. They knew all the market conditions better than anybody else. Um, and they will, they will survive for a thousand years plus, but they will eventually be pushed out and into a tiny little, tiny little uh, uh, valley. A few of them still survive speaking a, a kind of a, French Canadian version of Sogdi and uh, French, the uh, French Canadian version, French Canadian version of France, uh, as an analogy. Um, the, and, and they, me, meanwhile, we're almost finished here. China, China is going to be China, which is divided after the Han Dynasty for a while, will be reconnected by the Han, the Tang Dynasty. By the 700s, the Silk Road is thriving again and producing enormous amount of wealth for everyone who's trading along it. Um, and then uh, the, the last point that I wanted to emphasize that Franco Fran makes is, you know, you got all this borrowing. Look at the, look at how commonality you got every you got caves for uh, the caves for the Buddha. You got caves for uh, uh, the Hindus. Um, you got this very famous cave. Well, it used to be. It, but where is this? Janet was there. I think you guys were there too. Anyone else? Janet was there. Anyone else? Fanny. What's there now? <laughs> no, yeah, just the, the, the goddamn. Well, I mean, you could put up a laser show, I suppose. But the, uh, <laughs> you know, and the halo, the halo. You say, yeah, well, yeah, that's right. They, they've all got halos. Apparently, apparently, this was very, very old, uh, in, uh, and it wasn't a halo earlier on. It was a uh, fire, um, but it turns into a halo, and so. You got this commonality among all these religions and this thing and so forth. And what happens next, of course, is Islam shows up. So uh, that was, I, I apologize. I wanted more ch chatter. You know, it, 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 anything that's disquieting or irritating or <laughs> we left out, we just want to go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, to, to me, this is a, uh, um, the, science, the, the, the reason Jen and I wanted to read this book is because we're they were they're right to go into Central Asia. Let's now off. Because uh, Oxstan and Turkmen stand are closed. But the but the tour guide said the tour director said, you know, be patient, be patient. Um, the, 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 the spring is coming, things are changing. Um, the, the tour may go on anyway. But, uh, yeah. Is it closed because of the COVID or because of Russia? Because uh, Oxfam is closed because of what's going on in Kazakhstan. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 they had Alma, Almaty. Almaty is not the capital, but it's the biggest city. And they, I mean, they're in the streets, they've they got massive protests there um, oh. against uh, a, 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 a yet another corrupt. Uh, and and Almaty. And Kazakhstan is interesting because it is by far the most affluent of those far of those five because it got all that oil, and and, and, it's, a, and it's a fair living area. Um, so they, I think, the per capita income of, of Kazakhstan's like eleven thousand per capita, which doesn't sound much by our standard, but that's that's pretty. That's certainly beats Albania. It beats uh, Georgia. Um, so you got a middle, an upper middle class that's about hat with uh, with this dictatorial stuff. Um, so that's and, and, and Turkmenistan is it's like North Korea. They're, they're not as bad as North Korea. They'll let tourists in, but under very strict circumstances. And so, and for, Thank you, Rand. Yeah, you bet. You bet. That's where you want to go, huh? Not the floor. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I'm walking home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we've got to arrange. I I owe, I owe Bob lunch, so uh, we've got to we've got to arrange lunch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We got uh, certain to send to our friends in Los Angeles.